Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. This is the ninth video of uh, Haiyang's practice proverb series. Many community members have uh, left uh, interesting comments on the videos in this series, giving me many good ideas about what type of uh, proverbs I should explain. Great comments from uh, members reflect a good understanding of some deep topics that I have been working on from uh, last year in the proverb format, and uh, all of that feedback encouraged me to keep working on this new series. Following the same structure as the previous weeks, I will first answer questions about last week's proverb and then move on to the new proverb. So, let's recap last week's proverb first. It was 只求气法而忽略武功则流于虚幻只重武功而无事气法则难达上乘 A proverb that I created to explain the relationship between energy practice and the martial training. So, the translation is only working on the energy method but neglecting martial training, then it would make your practice illusory in self-defense, while only emphasizing martial training but ignoring energy practice would make it very hard to reach an advanced level. It is worth noting again that the term energy method used in this proverb does not mean anything related to mechanical energy or kinetic energy as mentioned by a community member in the comments. What I meant in my video in terms of energy method was the specific ancient practice, in which one focuses on energy sensation during practice, which I have explained in a three-part video series on the term qi gan. Links are in the description section of a last week's video. A community member, Luciana, left a message in Portuguese saying, translated the quote, How to integrate qi fa or energy method into martial training? And translated the quote. Well, it is a deep topic. Like I just mentioned that I have a three-part video series that partially answers this question. This is a very deep topic and mainly the reason why, in history, not many people have talked about it. After watching the three-part video series that I mentioned in last week's video, you will have a basic understanding of it. Since I only introduced the principle and the concept of it, without introducing a detailed training method. It only meant to point out some fundamental information. As for the detailed training method, it is far beyond the scope of this video. I hope you understand it. Hope that answers your question, Luciana. It may sound a bit unsatisfactory, but it is the nature of my video series that I only introduce some fundamental concepts without focusing on too many specific movements or practice. So, thank you for your question since it gave me a good opportunity to clarify it further. Now, let's move on to today's new proverb. This one introduces an important body structural concept that is used in Fa Jin or energy releasing practice. I will translate the Chinese version word by word, then I will explain the whole proverb in detail. The proverb is Shang Bei Gong Fa Li, Liang Zhou Yao Cheng Ling, Cai Ke Qi Li Hun Yuan. Translation While sending power from the upper back, elbows should extend outward, so that the power will be strengthened and become impactful. 
There are three sentences in that proverb. Let me translate them one by one. The first sentence, Shang Bei Gong Fa Li. Shang means upper, Bei Gong means back. In martial art community, people describe the human back as the back of a bow. So, Shang Bei Gong means upper back. Fa Li means Martial energy release, also commonly called Fa Jin, a concept first used in the internal style community and adopted by other styles later on. Some people deny the existence of this term by saying that since in internal style martial art practice, every movement should be able to be practiced in a Powerful manner. This term is meaningless. This is an illogical claim since a common occurrence of something doesn't mean it can be neglected. I have criticized this illogical claim time and time again. Regardless, a few people still hold on to their beliefs. Fa Li or Fa Jin can be used everywhere in martial arts, which should make the term that much more important and meaningful in practice, instead of one simply refusing to use this term. You can use whatever terms you want, but that will never change the nature of the practice, which is Fa Jin or Fa Li. The second sentence. Liang Zhou Yao Cheng Ding. Liang means two. Zhou means elbow. Yao means shirt. Cheng means push outward. Ding means support or supportive energy. Put it together, it means that elbows should extend outward with the supportive energy. It is very important to know that. The second sentence has to connect to the first since the upper elbow's posture is used for upper back fa jin in the forward or upward directions. In Xing Yi, especially 12 animal forms, there are many movements that release the martial energy forward upward instead of a typical Xing Yi forward downward energy direction. So, in this specific situation, body structure, especially the elbow position, has to be adjusted accordingly. The third and the final sentence, Cai Ke Qi Li Hun Yuan. Cai Ke means only so. Qi Li means martial energy and force. Hun Yuan means powerful refined, strengthened. Put together, it means the martial energy will become powerful in a refined way, which is the result of following the principle of elbow extending outward, where upper back releases martial energy forward upward. So, this proverb explains a specific body structure that aims to send martial energy upward forward by using the upper back, which usually is in such posture. One using the two arms to strike forward and upward. The upper back is the most important area to generate martial power which requires the elbows extended outward in a supportive position. This proverb also demonstrates that to analyze a martial structure and related traditional martial proverbs, a qualified martial artist should be able to identify the contextual information of that proverb. For example, Martial energy sending upward, forward, downward, and backward are different contextual information which are required to be analyzed specifically, or else 
misunderstandings and misinterpretations will definitely happen. Now, let's recap this proverb. Simply speaking, while sending power from the upper back, elbows should extend outward so that the power will be strengthened and become impactful. Please give it a try and you will see for yourself. That brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you find this proverb and its explanation informative and hope it benefits your practice. Please post your questions about that proverb in the comment section. I will answer them for you in the third part of a next week's video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.